you know that that AI right now is very popular and hot topic. Yeah, so many persons are interested in deep learning, in neural networks, and similar stuff. But it is a new situation when three years ago the big company like Google and others started to spend some money for the AI. The situation looks like something was changed, but I'm not sure if really something changed from 80s or 90s. Uh, today I'd like to focus on the machine learning techniques or AI techniques which can be useful for, for art or for music, for composing and for creating some fine arts composition or digital arts compositions. So, uh, the, the main trends in uh, engineering, which are focused on machine learning, uh, are going to the direction simula of simulate of human activity. So you have the neural network with some nodes, so you have some numbers and connections between the numbers, some relations or the functions between numbers. And this system should um, simulate or can be treated as a model of, of the complex situation in the environment or another type of data. But the thing is that that engineering, machine learning, algorithms and techniques are focused on uh, simulating of human activity. Uh, you cannot treat these techniques as something really creative. There is one objection. So, you can recognize the voice, you can recognize the, some patterns in any data you want to, to use. But for art, we are needing something like the system which is suggesting and creating absolutely new and original compositions, maybe based on the training uh, or without any training, like in reinforced learning. This is the, this type of algorithm in which you, we are not using any teacher. So, the software in reinforcement learning is looking for patterns in data without teaching. Uh, but at the beginning, I'd like to start with something which is very important for uh, as an introduction to machine learning. You must understand the idea of randomness and, you know, which is important in stochastic music or probabilistic music. So, the, 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 the first steps to, to deal with, with machine learning is you must start to learn about probabilities, how you are working with probability spaces, that you are not using any frozen music events, prepared aerial, but you have some space of probability uh, states and you are choosing something in a random way. Don't worry about this equation, but I'd like to strictly talk about what kind of randomness I'm using. So, uh, to define strictly, not in natural language. Natural language is not conclusive. You must use the notion of Kolmogorov complexity, for example. And so, Kolmogorov complexity relative to A is the function uh, each, each sequence of 0, 1, 0, 1, etc., etc., to the natural numbers. Uh, and this mapping or function is providing the, the, the longest of the of the program. So, you are computing minimal program which has provide you the x as a result. In, and if you have this Kolmogorov complex, complexity notion, you can define that something is really random 
exists random if Kolmogorov complexity of X is higher or equal to, to the length of, of X. It means that in this set you don't have any, you cannot find any patterns in the random sequence. This is very radical definition. If you can find the patterns, you can write the program which provides you the, and this program will be shortened this, than this sequence. Yeah. For infinite sets, there is a more complex situation. Uh, we are focused at the beginning for, of the sequence and we have some very very abstract but very nice ideas how you can deal with uh, mm, randomness in infinite sequence. The thing is that if you have infinite sequence in mathematical meaning, you must check the beginning of this sequence. If this, the beginning of the system, there's no possible to compress it or find some patterns at the beginning of this sequence. You can assume, or we, we are defining that this sequence is random. Yeah, <clears throat> but let's go to recurrent neural networks or some neural networks. For me, recurrent neural networks are so important because they have this, this, this feature which I'm interested they can be a kind of very creative tools. <coughs> you know probably these images of neural networks, many nodes, deep learning, you have some hidden layers and many connections. It is uh, recurrent networks, of course, you can also describe with many nodes, but no. You have the input data as a in time, you have some sets of function, which is A, and output. But the trick is that you have a kind of feedback. That the part of data from the output or, or after transformation or after using some uh, operations can be used once again, and can be mixed with the another sets of input data. You can analyze it, and and it can be described very simply, like a mm, network like this. That uh, this feedback function or recurrence, yeah. It depends how many steps you have in in time can be drawn like this, that the some parts of data from, in, from recurrent network in time one, zero is put it to, to, this, to the same network to time one. And so you have the, 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 the network which, is, which has a kind of feedback or recurrency many, many times. And because you can manipulate with A using A's and in A you have the box of different knobs, func functions, operations, you can re receive very interesting results. The, the problem with, with, with uh, there's a problem with recurrent networks, long memory problem. The thing is that sometimes if you are training language or if, you, if our brain is making something new based on the events or facts from the past, sometimes this fact, this input data from the past can be from very, very uh, old past or and how can I con be connected to the output data of data. Uh, how we can control that 
there's not only like in the Markov chain co inter connection between the one state and second state or the state of neural network in, in the time t and t plus one. No, sometimes we are interested in state of from the beginning in time after hundreds steps uh, how it can influence the output data. So around 2000 Schmidt Huber and some guys treated to to control these recurrent networks. And the thing is that the, this jump or this step between x t minus one to x t plus one can be controlled by using some activation functions and some. Let's imagine that this is a, the box with some knobs or some one is turned on, one is turned off. Uh, there are some functions which activate this. So um, you must believe me, but after a few years, we have something like uh, long, short memory neural networks, and they are very, very useful. You can recognize some numbers of houses, you can recognize the patterns in the music, you can recognize um, some visual elements and everything you, you want. I will present at the end some more examples. Here is the, the using of recurrent network in composing, so you can define beginning of your at the beginning, your composition with some specific probability distribution. But by using recurrent network, you can receive many different versions and you are manipulate and you are using different probability distribution or let's call it in, in, in language of um, composing some random walks or, and they are, generated by this system and provide you the, the new original compositions. Okay, they, they can con this probability distribution can control each variable you want. Mm, it's, you know, the most boring composing is based on, on the using only pitch, but you can control many different parameters. <clears throat> Interesting, another type of networks or algorithms for, for, um, for creating something original or, or finding some, some creative tools is reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, there is a kind of what we call the reward function. So, because the network is, is also, let's call it, in, in the kind of feedback with environment or the set of data. Environment can be everything. It can be your composition, yeah? And this reward function change the states of, of numbers in the neural network. This is a kind of deep learning network because you have some hidden lawyer inside. So you can, you receiving the sequence of number as a reward and you can modify the states or, or the, the neural network modified by itself the, the states of, 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 uh, of, of neural network. The information in nodes and information in the most popular algorithm in reinforcement learning looks like this, but maybe because for me, I will try to find an example how it can works in practice. I don't have sound, I suppose. Can I have a louder, please? 
this is starfish robot and it is robot and neural network based on reinforcement learning uh, you are not teach this network it starts to teach detecting data from environment the goal is to find the way to, to, to learn to move so this network is starting from random states or empty state and detecting some data from environment is starting to learn moving yes you see that it is very it can be when when i first time observe it i i didn't believe that it can work like like this that it is so organic movement you know we know from the past that the the detective of animal or human movement you need some very very strange algorithms you must spend a lot of time to to detecting human activity or but unfortunately the reinforcement learning algorithm is so powerful that you can very easy to learn and what is important that the result is, is, is really organic. It looks like animal movement. It is not defined from the top. You are not spending time writing thousands of rules for what this robot <coughs> should make in this situation or this situation not. It is starting from from the beginning from zero states and and detecting some data from environment yeah and it is using this kind of algorithm when you have the feedback and you are receiving some data from environment and neural network is modify its states yeah ah okay some another examples I started many, but during this pro, uh, pro, um, projector problems, I lose something. I started many, many years ago dealing with machine learning. It is from 2003, the, the chatbot which I wrote using Markov chain. And it is, is now chatbot or cha chat assistance is popular. Uh, this is kind of philosophical um, talk or so we can talk with your another type of example I built around 10 years ago no seven years ago the system which can detect the classes of electromagnetic waves so that's I'm using support vector machines. This is another type of algorithm. I didn't describe it, but it can, this algorithm can build a classes of electromagnetic waves. You are using the coil for detecting. And the result, it can be also the, the brain waves, it doesn't matter. And another type of uh, electromagnetic waves. The thing is that the system is, you are providing any type of device to this detector. It can be mobile phone, computer, etc., etc. And the, the program is saying you, this is computer, this is mobile phone. So this is the example of program which recognize some devices using the electromagnetic waves and using fast Fourier transformation for analyzing uh, the same I suppose that it can be used for detecting some classes of weight some emotional states of your brain and uh, the software can 
say that this is connected with this emotional state. At the end, I'd like to go back to randomness. Mm. You know probably that if you are using computers, digital computers like this, and you have you are using only pseudo random generators, yeah. In every program like uh, super collider, pure data, max MSP, etc., you have very very simple recurrent equation, linear congruence recurrent equations. You are putting the starting numbers like a seed. By the way, you can compose changing seed of random generator. But the pseudo random generators in computers are periodic. That after some time, you receive the same numbers. The people have a limited perception, and for them, it is not, it looks like random. But only for very simple application, for very simple music, maybe. Or the thing is that absolutely not useful for cryptography and more advanced techniques. So a few years ago, I decided I started to build some random generators, which are based on germanium. Uh, which are good, but last years I spent using uranium and thorium, radioactive materials, so radioactive decay. And it is so real random sequence of numbers you can receive. Uh, it is dangerous, please don't make it. <laughs> if possible, it is not a joke. It is, it is your... It is, you know, the life decision. So the better is use the... The thing is that you can use the data from weather, but you must detect data or on, and, and, and put to database from around a month. But the better is used for germanium diodes or very simple elements, which also can get, generate something which looks like random. Uh, but if you want to be sure that something is is uh, radically random what is important in cryptography you must use thorium it is not so dangerous here is example of installation with, with thorium So we'll have the, some clicks like in Geiger counter and the detector is a Geiger counter. Please remember that if you hear each period between one click and second is different. Absolutely different. This is, you know, the gamma radiation from universe which we detect. You can translate it as a, as a sequence of numbers and next you can use it for creating the kind of composition. And the thing is that I'm... Yeah, can I have a little louder, please? It sounds like this, you know, I'm working with some probability spaces, but the thing is that uh,
Okay, great. Thank you very much. This is composition when I use some probabilistic um, tools and and recurrent networks. Yeah, that's all. Thank you for your attention. So if if you, if you have any questions, but thank you very much for the talk. Any questions? Yeah, there is one question. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I was just wondering when, like, I, I knew about pseudo random generators and so on, but did you actually reach a point where people noticed the repetition of the pseudo random generators? I mean, like, I is it really within the range of perception or uh, not, possibly not, right? No, so. no, and yes, the answer when you, <laughs> you are using the thing is that. M the most group of people probably don't hear any difference. But when you are composing, changing seat of the pseudo random generators, they can hear the big differences. This is one answered. So yeah, there's a difference. The another thing is that, do you remember from 70s or 80s, we had some analog equipment, very nice, great sound and doesn't matter, it can be sometimes military equipment, which generates very interesting data and sound. Or in the 80s and 90s, some Korg machines and, you know, in the 90s, Atari games. And the quality of sound of, of each generation is, is different because each generation is using different equipment. Our generation, or from the beginning, after 2000, the quality of sound will be called, by the people 2050, these guys are from the age of using the linear congressional pseudo-random generators. This is only my opinion, but yeah, but I am sure that in 2020, they will use another type of random generators. And it will be an, a little different sound, different quality of sound. Yeah. I don't know if it is answered to your question. No. But I agree, this is very, very difficult to, to wait 20 minutes if this sequence of number really repeat and, and to... Like white noise you could... And, and the another thing is that, but there is a difference. If you have the white noise from the, the, the germanium or from uranium, this is different type of data and numbers than white noise from the pseudo random generator. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your attention and thanks a lot for the time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.